determinant is equal to zero. So after simplifying, you can come up with this equation here. Sigma cube equal to I1 sigma squared plus I2 sigma minus I3 equal to zero. So what will be is I1, I2, and I3. They are called invariants and they can be solved using these equations. <coughs> So I1 will be sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, the, the, the sum that is, and this one I2 will be equal to this one here, and then I3 will be the determinant of this one, which is that. So once you solve that, of course, plug it into this equation and take the roots of this equation. So since this is a cubic equation, there will be three roots sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, so the maximum value will be um, sigma 1, and the minimum will be sigma 3.
心，去厕所了。用按的。
So we have now here a sigma 1, 1, and we have here a sigma 1, 2. What about your sigma 2, 2? So what about your sigma 2, 2? What will happen to them? Now we don't have any other uh, forces uh, that will cause a uh, stress along the perpendicular axis. So this one is simply equal to zero. So if you're going to form your equation here, so your state of stress for this 2D problem is sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 1, but this one is equal to sigma 1, 2, and then this is sigma 2, 2. So that is your state of stress. And of course, this one is simply um, m1 all over i, that is now uh, f all over a, f all over a, and this one is 0. So from this one alone, you will now be able to determine your uh, principal stresses. Let's have a look at So if you have your notes with you, twenty three point seven point eight eight. That will be that will be in your lecture notes. Uh, I did inform you you can download it from uh, the Moodle Computational Solid Mechanics. in the slides that I gave you, it's in your lecture notes, computational solid mechanics. If you follow the trend, that will be chapter 23, 24, 25, 26, I guess. So nobody has done that yet? Still waiting for some signal to... For fourth year students. <laughs> Some of you, or most of the males, already went for two years and S. So what's the problem? Oh, you more mature, come on. I would understand year one. We provide you all this material so you understand that. But year two, come on. You're all engineers here. Okay. Yes, here you go. Um, that's 23.7.8 in the Euler beam theory of long cylinder beams, plane sections are assumed to remain plane and normal to the neutral axis. The shear stress resulting from the shear force is usually insignificant compared to the bending stress. So Mi equal to Er sigma all over Y. So this principle can be extended to a Timoshenko beam, which is a thick beam. Okay, and then of course with this beam we have the cross-sectional area, or sorry, the um, this one is the length, this one is your uh, thickness, and you have your width to be 4 centimeters. So this is your cross-sectional area. And you have your E to be given as uh, 12 GPA. So all we have to do is simply compute the principal stresses. And then, there you go. So let's do that. So let's repeat that.
So here is what we get at the moment. Okay, so you have that. Uh, so the thing is, the first thing that we have to do is to identify or determine our state of stress. And then others, of course, is just elementary, uh, determining the uh, determining the determinant, and then after that, simplifying to be able to determine the maximum principal stress or the principal stress values. So this is our problem. So we have a beam loaded, ten tons, and then your cross sectional cross sectional area is four by twenty five. So here. So this one now is your uh, sigma ij. So this one is sigma 1 1, sigma 1 2, uh, sigma 2 1, which is equal to sigma 1 2, and then we have sigma 2 2. Yes? So what we're going to do here is again uh, calculate that sigma 1 1. But what is sigma 1 1? Sigma 1 1 is simply equal to that my <coughs> over i. So what is our moment? So what is our moment? Our moment is simply force multiplied by this distance, yes? So what is our moment? Force multiplied by this distance. So let's try to be consistent. Um, let's try to use uh, newtons. So your moment will be uh, 10 pounds times how many? So this one is 10,000 uh, kg. Yes. Times uh, 10 newton per kg, that is. Or 10 meters per second squared, so it becomes a Newton. So 10 meters per second squared, so kilogram meter per <coughs> second squared is a Newton. So just multiply by the acceleration due to gravity. And then of course we multiply this one with your Y. What is the Y for women bending? <coughs> What is your Y for beam in bending? So that is for this one here. Very straightforward. Y is simply equal to uh, 25 divided by 2. So that is now. Um, let's put this one in meters. How about that? This will be 0. Point So what's the value for this one? So that's in centimeters, 0 0.125. Let's just try to be consistent. So this one now is a Newton. Sorry, uh, I forgot the force. So this is the force. This is to be multiplied by the distance, which is? 0 0.25 meters, so that is your distance, and this one will be your y1. Okay, so force multiplied by the distance is your moment, multiplied by y. So this one is your i, um, okay, bh12, bh cubed divided by 12. So what's your B? So what's the B here? It's B, B H Q. So here we're just looking into the cross-sectional area. So your B will be? 0 0.4, yes? So this will be in meter 
And then your age here, what's your age? 25. Or 0.25 cubed. Okay? So B H cubed over 12. So we're there, right? So let's check the units. So we have this one to be Newton. And this will be meter squared. And then this will be meters to the fourth. So Newton per meter squared. Is that our unit? So your sigma 1, 1 will be, uh, this one will be a Newton, meter, meter, meter squared, meter to the fourth. So Newton meter squared divided by meter to the fourth, we have now a Newton per meter squared or a small. Yes, so we're there. So just by checking the units, you know that um, you have an idea if you're doing it the right way. Yes? B H cube all over 12, we got it. This one is your Y, this one is your force multiplied by the distance. So what's the answer for this one? <laughs> so what's the answer for this one? So after you get this one, of course, you can solve now for sigma 1, 2, which is simply equal to force all over um, your cross-sectional area. So your force is of course. So I'm just going to write the Newtons now. And then your area will be um, 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.04. So this will be in meters squared.
Now, in your notes, there can be another equation there um, that can be uh, using the invariance i. But in this case, we just use the uh, long method wherein we just determine the uh, determinant and then we equate that to zero. So are we on the right track? So can you check if we're doing any mistake here? So after this one, of course, you can now substitute the values of sigma 1, 1 and sigma 2, 2. What's the value of sigma 2, 2? So this one is zero because we don't have any uh, stress acting along the perpendicular. So the stress is just acting uh, along the uh, longitudinal direction because of the bending moment. Mm. You have this one to be uh, zero as well, and then you have now this one to be uh, square of f over e. Yes? So you can simply substitute the values and then determine the roots. Once you determine the roots, then you can now determine sigma 1 and sigma 2. Yeah? So here let me just try to summarize. Sigma 1, 1 is equal to what's the value? 60 times 10 to the 6 Pascal. And then what's sigma 2, 2? This will be 0. And what about sigma 1, 2? That will be 10 times 10 to the 6 as well. Of course, this one, you should be able to solve a quadratic equation, right? I'm sure you will be able to determine that. Um, once you determine your stresses, then, of course, you can determine whether your beam is safe or not. Yes? So you can continue and determine sigma 1 and sigma 2. application for limit bending, wherein if it's 2D, then you just have this uh, sigma ij equal to sigma 1, 1, sigma p2, and this one is 0. What if you have pure torsion? It's just a pure shear activity. <coughs> pure torsion. It's just a pure shear activity, wherein your sigma 1, 1, and sigma 2, 2 are 0. And then, of course, you just have to solve your a sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 2, and this will be EC all over J. Where J is the polar moment of inertia, and then C will be half of that cross-sectional area. So all of these are given in your notes. 